in this time period, we're going to look at the United States and its involvement in World War II. This is usually your time period that um, you like to usually spend a lot of time on, look at a bunch of different battles, how it impacted different types of individuals. Uh, unfortunately for us, we're just going to look at the highlights and what you need to know for the EOC and more specifically the U.S. and their involvement in this war. So let's start with how in the world did we get involved in this huge major war? So how did it all start? One thing that's going to start, that starts the war in general, is going to be the rise of dictatorships. Um, most of you have heard of Hitler. He's going to be the head of the Third Reich in Germany. Mussolini, who's going to be the dictator in Italy. And then we have the emperor and prime minister in Japan. They're going to be what we call a, more like a totalitarian dictatorship. Um, these are going to be your groups that are going to be more aggressive and uh, they're going to lead their aggression in these regimes are going to motivate and lead to a lot of militarism and nationalism and a certain things that are going to happen because of economic necessity that are going to lead to some really unfair practices. The big thing that really starts World War II is going to be 1939, Germany's invasion of Poland. And before we get involved, the Germany, um, Russia, France, and England are going to be in this fight against Germany, Italy, and then Japan. And so due to their aggressiveness, we're going to see this whole war come about. So the dictators are going to be your ones that are going to have a big part in the war itself. And for our purposes, the thing that's going to get us involved is going to be the attack at Pearl Harbor. Uh, most of you have probably heard of Pearl Harbor, hopefully before you got into your U.S. history class. This happened on December 7th, 1941. It was a sneak attack. Part of the reason why the Japanese attacked was that they um, we had cut off supplies to them due to some of their imperialistic moves with um, invading into parts of China and places like that. So we cut off some of their oil supplies and other supplies, and that's going to lead to this sneak attack. Um, the effect of this is it's going to, we're going to have 6,000 Americans that are killed or injured in this attack. It's going to sink or damage 18 um, ships, so it's going to really severely damage our Navy. And that was their goal, was to try to cripple our Navy with a surprise attack. So this is going to be the event that gets the U.S. involved in World War II. A famous speech or quote that you may be seeing uh, on the test is going to be quotes from the what we call the Day of Infamy speech. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph because I know you can pause this and read it if you like. Uh, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Um, you also notice that he says, I ask that Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack... Um, that war has existed between the United States and Japanese Empire. So this was basically a speech to let the country know that we have declared war on Japan. And then that gets us into one of the things, to, some of the other things that have to do with um, this time period is going to be the idea of fighting on multiple fronts once we get involved in the war. We're going to have two, uh, we're going to have multiple fronts in Europe. And then we're going to have what we call two different theaters in the war. We're going to have the Pacific Theater, where we're going to be fighting the Japanese, and then we have the European Theater, where we're fighting the Italians and the Germans. And due to this, especially the, and the multiple fronts are going to be in Europe. And this is going to be an important aspect, especially when we look at the D-Day invasion and its impact on fighting on multiple fronts, because it's going to kind of split the priorities of the German and Italian military. A person that you will come across during World War II is going to be George Marshall. George Marshall is the general that served as chief of staff to FDR, and he's going to be what we call the organizer of victory and for his contribution in the war effort. So moving on to the Pacific Theater, this is going to be an area where it's mostly the Americans fighting the Japanese. And our major events during this era, so one of the strategies during the war was the idea of island hopping. And the goal of island hopping was to liberate these Pacific islands from Japanese control one at a time. And then at the same time, we're getting closer and closer to Japanese territory where we can uh, make an impact, maybe a future bombing. 
another major event with the Pacific area. This is actually going to happen right after, not long after Pearl Harbor and the Bataan Death March. This is in the Philippines, which was, um, they were invaded by the Japanese army the day Pearl Harbor was attacked. And remember, the Philippines were a U.S. territory at this time. So the U.S. and Filipino forces surrendered to the Japanese, and then the Japanese forced the prisoners to take a 60-mile march through the Philippine jungle known as the Bataan Death March. And it's considered that because they faced starvation, disease, exposure to exposure to the sun and no water during this time. And of the 5,000 Amer about 5,000 Americans, which is going to be half of the American POWs are going to die on the 60 mile march through the Philippine jungle. Some are going to be from violent deaths, bayoneted, shot, beheaded. Um, some were just left to die along the road due to these issues right here. So again, this is going to be another sad moment in the Pacific theater of World War II for the U.S. So the only major battle that you're really going to need to know for the Pacific part of the war is going to be the Battle of Midway. And that's because it is a major turning point in the Pacific Ocean. The reason why it's going to be a turning point is it's going to, it's going to um, severely damage the Japanese Navy. And it's a turning point because it's going to halt Japanese advance in the Pacific. A major person that you may need to know from this one is Admiral Chester Nimitz. And he was the admiral that was appointed commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet. So again, we just talked about Nimitz. He's going to be the admiral of the Pacific Fleet. Another person you may need to know from the Pacific realm of the war is Douglas MacArthur, who is going to be um, commander of the Army in the Pacific. Groups that are going to be important during this time are the Navajo Code Talkers and the Flying Tigers. Uh, the Navajo Code Talkers, uh, their language is an unwritten language. And it's also very complex. So this was often used to transmit messages by telephone and radio. And then the Japanese were unable to break it because it's so hard to understand and it is unwritten. So this helped with uh, the war effort, specifically in this uh, Pacific part of the war. Another group that you may hear about are the Flying Tigers. And this was a volunteer group. of the Chinese Air Force, and they're going to be pilots from the U.S. Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, and they're going to be recruited, and they volunteer against Japanese before, uh, they volunteer against the Japanese before we are even in World War II. Now we're going to look at the European theater of the war. So the main things you need to know from the European side of the war is the turning point, and then some of the other parts that we had a role in after the turning point, and then of course your leaders. Your leaders during the war are going to be Dwight D. Eisenhower, who is going to be the um, he is going to be the supreme Allied commander in Europe. Omar Bradley, who is going to be um, command all U.S. forces at D-Day, and then another famous uh, commander during this time is going to be George Patton, and he's going to be known for he was head of the. Third Army, he was what we would call a very brash general, very outspoken, and um, he was a very good tank commander. He had a, a, a very large, and they were able to um, have a lot of victories, mostly in um, northern Africa and then um, in, up into Italy in that part of the war. He's also going to be known for lifting the siege at Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge, which is another major battle during this time. Another important group during this time is going to be the Tuskegee Airmen, and they're going to be an African-American fighter group in the Air Corps, and their main job was they provided escorts for pilots on bombing missions. And this is an African-American group. And they will get a lot of uh, recognition and um, for their services and for their, during this time. The big turning point for the European theater of the war is going to be the invasion of Normandy. Uh, we usually know it as the D-Day invasion. The reason why it's called the D-Day invasion is because there were different days that they were planning the attack based on 
the weather and um, how calm the English Channel was going from England to France. And so there was A Day, B Day, C Day, and of course D Day, which was the one that ended up being the um, the best day for the invasion. So this was a an invasion where they came across the English Channel and they came onto the beaches of Normandy and attacked. And the big important thing from this is going to be that this invasion is going to stop the German advancement and start pushing Germany back, forces back into Germany. This is also going to reopen the Western Front. Because at this point, Germany had taken over France. They had taken over most of Western Europe. They had been bombing England and, Br and Britain. So this, And then they had been really fighting against Russia on the Eastern Front, and where they've had a lot of devastation in that area. So this is going to kind of open that front in the Western side again and start bringing more of the German troops over to this Western side and kind of provide some relief for the Russian side, the front on that side. Other parts that Americans were involved in in World War II, uh, the Holocaust, which you probably remember from your world history class, this is going to be the systematic imprisonment and killing of primarily Jewish people. It's also going to be other what we call undesirable populations, gypsies, some Soviets, um, people that were maybe mentally disabled um, are also going to be part of this um, systematic imprisonment and killing during this time. Six million Jews, which is two-thirds of those that lived in Europe at this time, and five to six million others were killed during the Holocaust. One of the things that we came across whenever the um, Americans were coming across Europe is they started coming along these concentration camps where we did not know the Holocaust was going on or that these concentration camps existed until these soldiers got into Europe and came across these camps and liberated those that were in them.